So, I mean, last year, we just coming in the new year and thought, what are we going to start the year with? And I just kind of randomly said, let's, let's be Uber. I was just thinking that, the, and I really thought about it and that whole Uber sharing thing, that whole Uber taxi, Uber, that whole Uber context. I just thought of that. I didn't think much more about it. And really, this week, I'm, I'm praying into it, what's going on, and just thinking about the whole Uber concept. How do you know there's a principle in the Word of God that says, first in the natural, then the spiritual? You know, and there's things shifting in our culture. And, and, and sadly, sometimes the church is, is not the, the agent of transition or the agent of transformation. We're the agent of catching up. But, uh, but we, should, we should be the agents of transformation and change. And when I think about Uber, I think about Uber Church. You know, and I think about uh, what all that means. Now, Uber, uh, Uber, the company Uber, interestingly, Uber's taken off. I think it was 2009 it began. And uh, so you can have, I got an Uber app on my phone. Who, who else has an Uber app on your phone? You can, anybody else? Who's actually used an Uber, Uber ride? Thank you. Interesting. Eh? Like a lot of people haven't. Most of them would be traveling or out of town or somewhere else. You know, Uber, you know, the political parties in the States right now, they use Uber more than any other mode of transportation. They do Uber. Uber's really cool because I can hit my Uber app and I can pick a driver. I can see where they are and then I can see and I can tell them that I want this ride at a certain time. And then I can watch on my app and I can see how close they are to picking me up. It actually shows them. It's like our GPS is connected and they know where I am. But you can rate your driver as well. So if the driver was just brutal, you can go uber terrible. And, uh, you know, that person gets a bad rating. So the driver doesn't want to get a bad rating. The driver wants to get a good rating because they want to have uber fares. They want to have uber pickups. But you know what? The drivers can also rate the uber users. They can rate you as a rider. And they say, that guy in my car was uber terrible. Stunk bad, left a bag of chips in my backseat. And it's interesting how all that can go on. It's a very interesting culture how all that's going on. And so, so there are more women that have embraced being Uber drivers. They've just invaded the whole thing. They feel totally safe. They like the thing. They love the flexibility. They love the ownership. But the people who can't stand it are the current taxi systems and structures and, and, and uh, municipalities who are just like, where did this come from? What are you doing? They're reacting. They're trying to catch up to what has happened here. And they're going, my goodness. We need to regulate this. I mean, what's going on? I mean, Candace, just uh, yesterday or just sometime in the last couple of days, uh, Aviva has said that they will now insure all Uber rides, all Uber things. Pretty cool. So uh, there's the obstacles everybody thought they would have. They're overcoming these obstacles, and the company is growing in a ridiculous way. Right now, you can take all the rental companies, put them all together, and value them all. Uber is valued more than all other rental companies, Hertz, Avis, all those things. It's, it's surpassed all all of them in value. In fact, give me a, another slide here. Uh, Uber was valued, in, oh, go back. Uber was valued in 2015 at $61.5 billion. Wow. Uber crossed the $50 billion mark five years, in five years. That was a feat that Facebook took seven years to accomplish. Explosive stuff. So I'm like, man, this is Uber. So I'm just kind of catching up to all this rather early exciting. Go back one more slide there, one more slide. Uh, oh, the other way. There, Uber Rush. In fact, now you can, you can order a submarine sandwich and it might be delivered by Uber Rush. Some guy will show up on his bike, shove it in his knapsack and, and bring you a submarine sandwich. Right now, there's places where if their own drivers are overrun, they can hook up their app. Businesses can hook up with Uber Rush and they can rush you that if they're overrun, they can get Uber Rush will run it for them. So, I mean, there's, there's Uber Black if you want a more, uh, more high-end ride. There's all these things. It's amazing how this thing is developed. And it's all developed in this whole networking and, and free kind of social network and market kind of area. It's just completely exploded. And so municipalities, regulations, they're all trying to say, what are we going to do to this? How do we respond to this? We need to, we need to deal with this. Oh, my goodness, they're going around the back door. This form of capitalism, this free market enterprise that has started up, and we don't have any control. We don't have a part to play. They've gone around the back door. They've bypassed all regulations, and they're just doing it themselves. To me, it sounds good, giving it to the man. You know what I mean? Just... <laughs> So I love that kind of stuff. So I was thinking about all of that. Now, a definition of Uber. Definition of Uber. Uber. Uber is being a superlative example of its kind or class. Uber. Uber awesome. Uber. It is the extreme or excessive degree. It is Uber. I'm going to have Uber grandchild. I'm going to be Uber granddad. I'm going to be Uber obnoxious. I'm going to have Uber pictures. And you're going you're gonna to unfollow me on Facebook. I know it. 
because it's like going to be messy. I, I, I did a, you can do translation things, so I said I want to translate Uber uh, into English, and when I pushed the button, it said supercharge. If you're Uber, it's a supercharge. Who wants to have a supercharged year? Supercharge. We're going to be Uber. We're going to be Uber Impact, Uber Glory, Uber Amazing, Uber Souls, Uber Healing. Ha! Ah, Uber. We're going to have an Uber year, supercharged. The Greek, Greek equivalent is, uh, of the word right there is uh, sphodra. And that means vehemently or a high degree or to be exceedingly or greatly. That was when the wise men, when they came out and they saw the star again and they followed it. It says they followed it with exceeding great joy. I mean, not just joy, not even just great joy, but uber joy. They were uber overjoyed with the fact that they had a revelation that where the king of kings was being born and they were so excited to walk into their destiny. So uber, very, very exciting stuff. Uber. Now, John chapter 2, 14 to 17, it says, and they was found in the temple those who sold oxen, and he made a scourge, which means he made a whip. All right, so this is, Jesus walks in, he goes, oh my goodness, look at this, they're, they're ripping people off, they're money trading in the temple. I mean, people who don't show up with a sacrifice, they have to change their money into temple money, and they're just ripping people off on the exchange, and then they're selling them these, you know, special sacrifices. Jesus saw that, he got uber upset. When he got upset, it made a scourge, or literally, that's the King James, but he made a whip. So you imagine you're one of his disciples. So Jesus walks in the temple, then he walks back out, goes over, gets some leather and a couple pebbles and stones and stuff, and then he sits down, and they go, what's up, Jesus? What's going on? We're not going in? Not yet. What are you doing? Just making something. What's he making over there? And then you see, it looks, like he's, it looks like he's making a whip. How many ever thought the sign of revival would be a whip? So that's when Jesus came to his house and he said, this don't look like my father's house. I know what my father's house should look like. And I've got authority to straighten things out in my father's house. So he came and he had a whip. How many say, bring on the whip, Lord? <laughs> I love you. This will hurt me more than it hurts you. Uh, not really. But you see, he fashioned a whip and he came in and he overthrew the tables. And it was very gentle, though. Please get out. Stop this. And... <laughs> It was pretty messy stuff. I mean, the guys all stood back. They went, oh, my goodness. But it says, then they remembered. They, they remembered in the word of God. It said, make not my father's house a house of merchandise. And his disciples remembered that this was written in it, in that same passage. It said, the zeal of thine house has eaten me up. The zeal for your house has eaten me up. I want us to be uber this year, uber passionate about the things of God. I want us to be excessive and extreme. I want us to go off the chart. I'm feeling, I don't know if I'm excited about a grandchild or I just feel the glory of God. It's just good. It's going to be a, a, an uber season. We're going to talk about uber for things. But here's Jesus. You know, Jesus would have been uber. He would have been considered a little bit excessive. Like this guy's, and you see, and just like Uber, trying to municipalities and government structures, religious structures, all tried to respond to Jesus, and they were all trying to put a harness on him, say, "Whoa, dude, settle down." And they came, questioned him. They always challenged him, "What are you doing?" And and just like the whole Uber, that whole shared networking thing. I know I had the uh, Air Airbnb, and that's another shared thing. You get an Airbnb app. And what you can do is you can just press that button and you can bypass all other, you know, cycles and you can just, you can get a bed and breakfast anywhere in the world. Sometimes you show up and you just got a bed in somebody's home, but it's a really good deal. And you can now travel places and get an Uber cab to take you to an Airbnb and, and your whole experience can be cheaper and you can get by quicker and do everything far more efficiently by doing all these things. But they're breaking all the rules. They're, they're doing everything. It's just, it's just messing with the whole system. Some people are so concerned that one guy, he did Uber all month long instead of running his car and he found out that if I Ubered all month long instead of my car it was cheaper to Uber than to own my own vehicle 